In the second approach, let's try to use Quick Select, which is horse selection algorithm. Quick Select is a textbook algorithm typically, which we use to solve the problems like find case something, like case smallest, case largest, and case most frequent, and case less frequent, etc. It has O of an average time complexity, and it is widely used in practice. And it is worth noting that the worst case time complexity is O of n square, although this probability of the worst case is negligible. This approach is the same as quick sort. We just choose a pivot and define the position in a sorted array in a linear time by using the partition algorithm. As an output, we have an array where the pivot is on its perfect position in a sending sorted array, which is sorted by its frequency. So all elements on the left of the pivot are less frequent than the pivot, and all elements on the right are more frequent or have the same frequency. Hence the array is now split into two parts. If by chance our pivot element took n minus k's final position, then the k elements on the right are these 12 k frequent we are looking for. But if not, we can choose one more pivot and place it in the perfect position. First, we try to build a hash map where the elements are its frequency and the arrays contain the unique elements. Although the elements are unique, but their frequencies are not. And then we choose a random pivot and put it in its place in a sorted order array. And then on the left side of the pivot, there are less frequent elements, and on the right side of the pivot, there are more frequent elements, or the same frequency element. And then we know the pivot is n minus k less frequent element, and finally we just return the right part of the array. If that were a quick sort algorithm, we would have to process both parts of the array. That would result in O of n log n time complexity. Well, in this case, we don't need to deal with both parts since we know in which part to search the n minus k less frequent element. So that will reduce the average time complexity to only O of n. This algorithm is quite straightforward. We just build a hash map, which is the element pointing at its frequency. And then we convert its key into the array of unique element. And we should note that the elements are unique, but the frequencies are not. That is, means we need a partition algorithm that will work fine with the duplicates. The second step will work with unique array. Just by using a partition scheme, we place the pivot into its perfect position. The pivot index in the sorted array will move the less frequent element to the left of the pivot, and we move the more frequent or of the same frequency element to the right. Then we just compare the pivot index and n minus k. If the pivot index is equal to n minus k, that means this pivot is n minus k's most frequent element, and all elements on the right are most frequent or of the same frequency. Then we just return this top k frequent element. Otherwise, we will choose the other side of the array to proceed recursively. There is a zoo of partition algorithm, but the most simple one is Numuto's partition scheme. So how does it work? We first move the pivot at the end of the array by using swap, and then we set the pointer at the beginning of the array. We assign left boundary become the store index, and then we iterate over the array by using a swap the store index and i, so that we can move all of the less frequent element to the left. And after each step, we move the store index one step to the right. And finally, after we finish that, we have to move the pivot to its final place. Then we return this index. The k top frequent element can be found by sorting the unique list in long decreasing order of frequency. We selecting the element at the index n minus k, well, n is the length of the unique list. So to avoid sorting the entire unique list, which would take O of n log of n time, the quick select algorithm is used to partially sort the list from the least frequent element to the most frequent element until the n minus k's least frequent element takes its place at the index n minus k in the sorted list. The partition function partitions the list into two parts, the element that occurs less frequent than the pivot element, and the elements that occur more frequently than the pivot element. So the quick select function uses the partitioning to recursively find the n minus k least frequent element by either going left or right, but depending on the position of the pivot element. 
And once the n minus k list frequent element takes place and the index n minus k is sorted list, then all of the elements in the right of it are more frequent and all of the elements to the left of it are less frequent. Therefore, this slicing operation unique at n minus k to the n will return the k most frequent element in the input list since they corresponding to the rightmost k elements in the partially sorted unique list. We use the master theorem to help us to get the average complexity by writing the algorithm course as t of n. So the recurrence relation is a multiplied by t of n divided by b plus function of n, which is a general form of recurrence relations. So that arises in divide and conquer algorithm, where the input is recursively divided into subproblems sides of n divided by b, and then solve it independently. And the term function of n represents the cost of dividing the input into subproblems and combining these solutions, and the term a multiplied by t of n divided by b, which will represent the cost of solving each subproblem recursively. And the parameters a, b, and the function of n depend on the specific algorithm and the problem be solved. The time complexity of this algorithm can be determined by solving the recurrence relation using technique such as mass theorem. In this problem, we use the mass theorem case 3. So this is the case of random pivots and the recurrence relation is a specific example. The time of n is equal to a multiplied by t of n divided by b plus function of n, where a is 1 and b is 2, and the function of n is equal to n. So the time of n is equal to t of n divided by 2 plus n. So that result in O of n time complexity. The time complexity of the quick slack algorithm is O of n in every case. Well, n is the length of the input list. However, in the worst case scenario, where the pivot element is chosen poorly, then this algorithm can degrade, which will lead to O of n square time complexity. However, the worst case scenario is unlikely to occur in practice, especially when the pivot element is chosen randomly. In the worst case of constantly by chosen pivots, this problem is not divided by half at each step. It becomes just one element less, so that will lead to O of n square time complexity. It happens if at each step you choose the pivot not randomly, but take the rightmost element. Well, for a random pivot choice, the possibility of having such worst case is negligibly small. In the worst case scenario, where the pivot element is chosen poorly, such as always choosing the rightmost element. So this algorithm will divide the list by only one element at each step. So this will result in a worst case time complexity of O of n square. When the pivot element is chosen randomly, the probability of selecting a bad pivot element repeatedly is very low. So the expected running time of this algorithm remains linear in the size of the input list. When the pivot element is chosen randomly, the probability of selecting a bad pivot element repeatedly is very low, so the expected running time of the algorithm remains linear in the size of the input list. And then we return a list of k elements, which are the top k frequent elements in the input list. So this list obtained by slicing the unique list from the index n minus k to the end of the list. So the unique list contains all of the distinct elements from the input list, which is stored in the non-decreasing order of the frequency. By slicing the list from the index n minus k to the end, we select the k most frequent element from the list. So the slicing operation takes all of k time, which is negligible compared to the time complexity of the quick slack algorithm. We call the quick slack function with three arguments. Left is zero, and right is n minus one, and k smallest is n minus k. This will use the quick slack algorithm to partially sort the unique list in non-decreasing order of frequency until the n minus k least frequent element, which take place at index n minus k in sorted orders. The left and right parameters represent the indices of the leftmost and rightmost element of the sublist that need to be sorted. In the first call of quick select, the entire unique list needed to be sorted. So the left set is 0 and the right is set to n minus 1. Well, the n is the length of the unique list. 
The case smallest parameters represent the index of the element that need to be found in the partially sorted list. Since we want to find the n minus k least frequent element, we set the k smallest to n minus k. So this parameter is used to determine whether we should continue the recursive call on the left or the right of the sublist. So by calling the quick select 0, n minus 1, and n minus k, we ask this algorithm to partially sort the entire unique list in long decreasing order of the frequency until n minus k's least frequent element takes its place at the index n minus k in sorted list. The quick select function is a recursive function that uses a quick select algorithm to partially sort the unique list in long decreasing order of the frequency until the n minus k least frequent element takes its place at the index n minus k sorted list. So the purpose of the quick select function is to sort a sublist of the unique list between the indices left and right until the k smallest least frequent element takes its place in sorted sublist. So the k smallest parameter is the index of the element that need to be found in the partially sorted list. It's corresponding to the n minus k least frequent element in the entire unique list. And the function continue to recursively partition the sublist into two parts based on the pivot element until the pivot element takes its place at the index k smallest in the sorted list. First, we check whether the sublist to be sorted contains only one element, which is the condition if the left pointer is equal to the right pointer. If it does, then this function simply returns without any further partition or sorting. So this is the base case of the quick select function, where the sublist to be sorted contains only one element. When this happened, we have found the case smallest least frequent element, so this function can return without any further recursion. This base case is important because it ensures that the function will eventually terminate. Even if the case smallest least frequent element is not found in the input list, without a base case, this function will continue to do recursive repartition for the input list indefinitely, which will lead into an infinite loop or a stack overflow error. So just by checking for the base case of a sublist with a container only one element, we can ensure that this function will terminate after a finite number of recursive core, so even if the desired element is not found. We select a random pivot element from the unique list to use the partitioning step of the quick select algorithm. So the random module is used to generate a random integer pivot index between the indices left and the right of the current sublist. So this can ensure that the pivot element is chosen randomly and not based towards any specific position in the sublist. So choosing a random pivot element is an important part of quick select algorithm because it helps us to ensure that the algorithm's expected runtime is often well and its length of the input list. For example, if we will always choose the first or the last element as our pivot, this algorithm's runtime could be as bad as O of n square in the worst case. So by choosing the random pivot element at each step, the quick select algorithm will ensure that the expected runtime is linear in the length of the input list, which makes it a practical and efficient algorithm for solving top k frequent element problem. After we partition the sublist into two parts, we call the partition function, which takes three arguments, left, right, and pivot index. It then will return the index of the pivot element, where the element that occurs less frequently than the pivot element will in the left, and the element that occurs more frequently than the pivot element will on the right. This index is used to determine whether we should continue the recursion on the left or the right of the sublist. First, we find the frequency of the pivot element by indexing the count dictionary with the pivot element from the unique list. Next, the pivot element is moved to the rightmost position in the sublist. So this is done so that we can ensure the pivot element doesn't interfere with the partitioning process. We just swap the element at the pivot index with the element at the rightmost position in the sublist by using the uh, turbo assignments. And after this operation, the pivot element is now located in the rightmost position. This step is a common practice in many partition based algorithms like quick select and quick sort by moving the pivot element to the end of the list so that we can ensure we won't have to worry about swapping it with the other element during the partitioning process. And after we move the pivot element to the end of the sublist, we can begin the partitioning process.
Then we move all of the elements in the sublist that occur less frequently than the pivot element to the left of the pivot. And first, we initialize the store index variable to the leftmost index of the sublist, and then we loop through each element in the sublist from left to right use a for loop. And then, for each element in the sublist, we check if the frequency is less than that of the pivot element by indexing into the count dictionary with the element from the unique list. If the frequency of the current element is less than that of the frequency of the pivot element, then we just swap the element at the current index with the element at the store index. And well then, we just increment the store index by one, so that we can ensure that all of the elements that occur less frequently than the pivot element are moved to the left of the pivot. At the end of this process, all elements that occur less frequently than the pivot element are located to the left of the store index, and all elements that occur more frequently than the pivot element are located to the right. And the store index variable represents the index at which pivot elements should be placed to ensure that all elements on the left are less frequent and all elements to the right are more frequent. The final step of the partition function is to move the pivot element to its final sorted position in the sublist. After removing all of the elements that occur less frequently than the pivot to the left of the store index, the pivot element now can be moved to its final sorted position. This is done by just swapping the pivot element at rightmost position with the element at the store index position. This operation so that we can ensure that the pivot element is now in its correct sorted position, with all of the elements to the left of it occurring less frequently and all of the elements to the right of it occurring more frequently. And after removing the pivot element to its final sorted position, we have to return the index of the pivot element in its final sorted position. So this index will be used later to determine whether to continue the recursion on the left or the right sublist in the quick select function. After partitioning, we check if the pivot element is in its final sorted position. If so, it means that the case smallest element has been found and we can directly return. But if the pivot element is not in the final sorted position, we need to continue the partitional process on one of these two sublists. And if the case smallest index is less than the pivot index, that means the case smallest element is located in the left of the sublist, and then we call the function recursively on the left sublist with the update indices. If the case smallest index is greater than the pivot index, that means the case smallest element is located in the right of the sublist, then we just call this function recursively on the right sublist with updated indices. And this process will continue until the case smallest element has been found, and at that time, we just return this point. The space complexity is up to O of n space to store the hash map and the array of unique elements, because in the worst case, the space complexity of the quick select algorithm is O of n. This is because the algorithm uses a hash map to store the frequency of each element in the input list, which can have up to n distinct keys. Additionally, the algorithm creates an array of unique elements from the input list which can also have up to n elements in the worst case. Therefore, the total space complexity is O of n in the worst case.